So you can pay four or five hundred dollars for a top, do it yourself, or man, upwards to fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars to have a professional replace the top, or for about five or six dollars, you can extend the life of your top a little bit. Now it's not going to look brandy spanky new, but considering all the money that you'll be saving, it may be something you'd like to do. Welcome to Blood, Sweat and Gears. My name is Richard and I'm so glad that you are with us today. Now we're going to be starting a series of videos on restoring your convertible top on the older Ford Mustang. This particular one happens to be my 2006 uh, Mustang convertible and the top has seen better days. Now I have done a little bit of restoration on this already. Uh, last year I actually did the thorough cleaning, uh, the re-dyeing and also resealing it. Now I keep the car in the garage but you know some people don't have that luxury and if you live in some harsher environments uh, these tops will fade really quick uh, they become a little bit more porous so you may need to do the restoration techniques that we'll show in some of these other videos a couple times a year or at least once a year but what we're going to look at first of all is repairing small tears in your top and i'll be talking about the technique that I came up with. It's very easy, uh, takes but a couple minutes, and we'll see what that happens. So that'll be in this particular video. The next video that we're going to do is going to be actually restoring the color on the top and then resealing it. And then the third video, which is going to be the fun one, is one of the issues that we have here is when the glass starts to fall out uh, or you start getting leaks in the back window, is how to reseal the back window. Now as a bonus, uh, if I can figure it out, one of the things that happens when you put the top down in some of these older models is you get all that bunching. Uh, I don't think you, yeah, you get all the bunching over here. And that's when the top is down and usually you've got to go in and tuck it down just to make it look nice. Well, it's actually a very simple fix. And in the fourth video, we'll show you that. So with that, let's get on to the other side of the vehicle and we're going to start with repairing some tears. Now we're on the passenger side of the 2006 Ford Mustang and uh, as you can see, I've already started doing some work on uh, the repairs of the top. Now, this is a very large section that I had actually repaired and that was my experimental um, piece here. And we're going to see a couple other spots here that are in progress and then one over here that uh, hasn't been done yet. Now, I have tried a number of different types of uh, ways to try and repair things. Now, I've used the Amazing Goop and I've also used RTV. Now, the issue that I have with those two is that I find that it takes a long time for them to cure. Uh, you can't sand them, so you wind up getting bubbles or things like that. Um, this might have actually had RTV on it at one point. Um, it, it just has a lot of issues to it. And then also when you go to dye, uh, it doesn't take the dye, so you're going to have a lot of discoloration. So what I've elected to do is go with uh, good old super glue. Uh, the super glue works really well. So some of the pros of the super glue is it goes on easy, it's really, really strong, it cures fast, and it's sandable. And then after it's sanded, it takes color pretty well. And we're going to get to that in the next video. So what I've done on this, as you can see, is I have have filled in different areas of the, um, well, actually, let me do it on a, on a real one here. So I actually have a tear that's starting here. And what I'm doing is just filling it. And What's really nice about this is since it's a liquid, it's going to flow into all the little nooks and crannies, which is really nice. So I'm going to build that up just a little bit. 
Now this one here probably will not need a whole lot of sanding. Now I have a couple others that I've done over here and after using the super glue what I've done is I'll either take a 120 uh, all the way down to a 400 grit sandpaper. Uh, the other thing if you want is you can use a file, a rasp and um, I've actually used that on this to get things really smooth so as I run my finger over the edge I don't feel too much of a transition. This here has a little lump to it so I'll just rasp it out a little bit there we go till I don't feel a lump. In a way this is very similar to doing drywall is you want to have a smooth transition over that. So let me take some of the sandpaper and this is really straightforward So I smooth it down really well and there's a little spot here that I do want to fill and there's one over here. Now let me go down to one of these smaller spots. And you can see it sands out pretty quickly. doesn't look too pretty right now but we're gonna get there we're gonna hide it as best as possible now as you can see I put some paper down that kind of flows the uh, the dust off <laughs> this is my ever handy uh, horsehair um, brush and actually it used to be for boots and I use it to get all the dust out you can see it just kind of flowing down uh, you can take your vacuum cleaner or whatever and clean that all up but I think that is really close and I'd say we're about done here so there you go now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna fill these little crevices here and when this cures in about an hour or so I'm gonna quickly sand those so that it's smooth and you can see it move a little bit you can see it flow now some of the disadvantages of using the super glue is it is very stiff so when you know you have some flexibility here this especially in a large uh, repair like that it's going to be a lot stiffer uh, there's very little flex so that may cause issues a little bit later on now one of the things that I did try to do with this large one is I found some extra material uh, you know inside a lot of times there's um, some leftover material underneath and you can trim a little bit out and that's what I tried to do to patch that particular um, hole and I just kind of worked it in and got it in I used the RTV it didn't work too well uh, but this seemed to do pretty well here so that's where we're at um, this looks okay I think I'm gonna leave it like that and then this one here Man, that's almost dry. I'm going to put a second coat over here. Let's get out of the light, get in the light. And you're going to find the way that the rips, the tears start are these little, little tears. Uh, there's, you know, the, the stress on the fabric itself and it just starts to give way. This is a good way by taking a look at your overall condition of the top finding these little ones and then using this as a bit of preventive maintenance so there you go here's the basics of doing a super glue repair on your this case 16 year old top and we'll catch you in the next video